The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us here at The Loft where we encourage you to view local. My name is Kathy Bailey-Smith along with our lovely and talented co-hosts Andrea Sebastian and Amber Logue and tonight we have a very special show for you. We have a very special guest here, um, a Nashua native who's made us very, very proud. Topeka, um, welcome so much and, and thank you so much for being here on the show with us. We are just so delighted that you've taken the time out of your busy, busy schedule to uh, spend some time with us today. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be on your show. Oh, like so you made Nashua <laughs> so very proud. I feel like I need my like smart, super smart glasses on to talk to you today. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nashua is a great city, so I'm, I'm very happy to represent Nashua wherever I go. Awesome. So for people like me who might, some of what you do flies way over my head. Could you just explain to the folks at home and to us, what is it that you do exactly? Yeah, sure. So basically over the past three years, I've been working on this scientific research project that involves finding a better method of purifying water that's safe, sustainable, cost-effective, and eco-friendly. So what I created, the long title version of it, is a photocatalytic pervious composite. So to break that down, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a photocatalyst, photo meaning from the sun, and a catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. So basically I'm speeding up a reaction using the sun. So what happens is when UV radiation comes in and strikes the composite that I've created, these really highly reactive species are created. And that's responsible for removing all the bacteria and all the organics. So this composite I created is also pervious. So it's like a filter where you can filter the water through and the water is being uh, filtered while photocatalysis is removing bacteria and organics. Wow. wow. How'd you sit back and think about doing it? Like, how did you um, brainstorm and how did you start from the beginning with that? Yeah, so initially how I started my project was I started looking up how are people currently purifying water in developing countries. And that's how I learned about something called SOTUS which is solar disinfection. So basically what they do is they take these clear plastic bottles and they fill them up with the contaminated water and expose them to sunlight. But SOTUS alone is very slow. It can take up to eight hours in order to purify the water. So then I started Googling, okay, how do I make this process faster? And that's how we learned about photocatalysis or speeding up the solar disinfection process. So in creating my composite, I wanted to overcome the current disadvantages of the photocatalytic methods that they use in developing countries. Now, thinking back over these three years, what is the one moment to you that really stood out that made you the most proud of what you've done? Um, I've definitely had a lot of amazing experiences over the year. Yeah, I guess yeah, something so that i I really enjoy that's been a part of my life because I've been so interested in science is meeting other young science enthusiasts and being able to present my project to them and hear more about what they've shown. So just being able to be um, at a level where I can present at the international level is always a lot of fun. That's awesome. And so you're at Harvard now. Yes. <laughs> what do you think? Harvard Square, ha Harvard University, is this a lifelong dream for you? or? Yeah, getting into Harvard has always been something that I've dreamt about, and I'm very, very fortunate to be uh, attending such a great school. I really love the environment here. I feel like everyone here is always looking to help everyone else succeed, so I just love the collaborative environment here, and I'm so excited to spend the next four years here. Congratulations. Thank you. You've won a lot of awards. Um, what are some of the ones that stick out the most that made you really, really grateful for everything that you're doing? Um, I guess the very first national science competition I did 
was called the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge. And that was a very exciting competition because, of course, I was only in middle school and wow. being able to travel <laughs> to 3M headquarters in Minnesota. I got to skip school for that and present my project. And we met with other nine finalists from across the country. And we also each had a mentor from 3M who would help us uh, bring our ideas to life. So that was the very first science competition I did. And that has always stuck out in my mind because I feel like that was definitely the beginning of my science fair journey. Have you always enjoyed science? Like what was the first kind of clue that you loved science? Yeah, I've definitely always enjoyed science and that ever since I was very young, any questions that I would ask my parents would always be answered using scientific explanations. And so that kind of always sparked my interest in science. And then in middle school, I went to uh, Fairgrounds Middle School in Nashua. I started my first ever uh, science bowl team. And so as part of that science bowl team, I started learning a lot more uh, science in depth. And that, again, got me more and more interested in science when I realized that I wanted to start using science in order to solve problems. Now, are your parents, have, do they have a scientific background, or is this something that's unique to you? Yeah, my dad is actually a professor at the University of Massachusetts Lowell, where he uh, teaches engineering. So he definitely does have a scientific background that I think he's been able to instill in me. Awesome. Now, oh, sorry. <laughs> We're so excited to talk to you. We all want to talk <laughs> at the same time. Um, so... There's a lot in the state of New Hampshire with, um, there's a big push right now for girls to be more interested in engineering and science and math. So what words do you have to share with them to, to promote that? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely very supportive of having more young girls um, pursue their interests in STEM-related fields. I think STEM is definitely, uh, STEM career is definitely something that is STEM careers are definitely something that are going, we need more in our country as we move forward. So I definitely encourage any young girls to pursue their interest in STEM, uh, no matter how much they get discouraged uh, in, along the way. That's great. Yeah. And so did your parents, I like to think of like the psychology of all this. Did they see like you as this precocious like two-year-old Mixing and, you know, <laughs> getting out the flour, you know what I mean? I, would, I just wonder how that happens. Um, I guess I'm not really sure you would have to ask my parents for that, but I think that from a young age I was definitely one to always ask questions. And when I was like, maybe not two, but when I was like seven to ten, I would always build things. Like I'd like building like my bicycle from the using the instructions and building like uh, with Legos and Connect, so they've always seen that kind of engineering side of me. And so when you were in middle school, because I have a middle schooler and a freshman in high school, I just can't imagine having, I, I mean, it just blows my mind kind of to think about what you've done. It really is, it, it really truly is amazing. And um, so did you realize at that point that this was the direction that you'd go in, that, wow, this is where I would be this many years later? Definitely, I do not. You know, last year, I couldn't imagine where I am. This year, three years from now, I definitely couldn't have imagined uh, where I am now. So I think I'm just very fortunate to be on the path that I've been on, and I hope it continues in the future. What, uh, what does the future look like? I know with your, with your current invention that you've been promoting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as far as my invention goes, I hope to actually deploy it in the real world. So that's something that I'll definitely be looking into um, as the future comes. And so do you have any other areas that you'd like to um, explore in science? Yeah, I'm actually really interested in neurobiology. So that's something that I would like to explore here at Harvard. And I also kind of have an interest in computer science, but I'm not, I'm not very knowledgeable in that field yet. So hopefully I'll get to explore that as well. It's hard to believe you can admit you're not knowledgeable in something with what you've, <laughs> what you've <I> done. <laughs> it's incredible. I'm just like, really wow. <laughs> now, back at the, at the beginning of this, you were saying how proud you are and how you talk about Nashua everywhere you go. So. Um, for those who are from here and, you know, really want to know, what is it that you love most about Nashua? 
Uh, yeah, I guess my teachers at National High School South particularly have always been really supportive of my science project. And whenever I'm traveling, they're always encouraging me. Uh, specifically, my uh, freshman year chemistry teacher, Ms. Polowarzik, actually before that first science competition that I entered, she threw a little party just celebrating the fact that I had uh, made it to that national level and that I was going to compete nationally. So I think that supportive environment is something that I'm really proud of and really grateful for in Nashua. That's awesome. I go goosebumps. <laughs> so are you born, you were born in Nashua? Yeah. Born, born and, and raised. raised. So a true Nashuan. <laughs> yeah. We love that. That's awesome. We really love that. Now it's interesting to me because we were talking before the show about how some people look at public schools, public schools in Nashua or whatnot. And mm -hmm. I've always been of the mentality that people bloom where they're planted. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are about public education and how you feel about that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that in America in general, there are a lot of places where we can improve upon our K through 12 public education system, especially when we compare with the rest of the world. And the fact that our universities are some of the like highest in the world, while our public school system is not. So I think there's definitely areas in which we can improve. That being said, I think that if a kid is going to strive for the best, then they can do that in uh, several different environments that they're placed in. So I don't think we can blame our public school system for, like, you can't blame your school system for any lack of success, but I definitely think that we can have more programs in, in America and in, even in just Nashua that are encouraging students to, at least something that I'm passionate about, is encouraging students to pursue STEM careers and STEM research. So there are definitely a lot of areas where we can improve upon in, in our public school systems. Now, what would a program like that look like? Yeah, so I know in other states, for example, our, our neighbors in Massachusetts, they have these uh, STEM research programs where students can, it's either after school or it's as part of a class that they take in which they learn how to do high level scientific research. So that's a skill that I, I would like to see many other kids in uh, Nashua and New Hampshire in general start learning. And now you started, I was watching your TED talk um, earlier. <laughs> And they showed some really cool pictures of you working in your kitchen and in your garage. Um, and something you said was really interesting to me, um, and I would love for you to go into that, is the stigma of what a scientist is and what it really is and what it means to you. Yeah, so I think that when people are asked to envision a scientist or like what do you, what do you see when you picture a scientist or an engineer, you often think of this guy in a white lab coat inside a lab, either sitting hours at his desk doing research or like mixing these vials of chemicals that are giving off smoke. But honestly, that's not what, that's, that's like the cartoon version of what a scientist is. A real scientist is just someone who asks questions and is curious about the world. So I think more people need to know that and more people need to know that if you want to pursue an interest in science, there's such a wide variety of things you can do. For example, one summer I was actually in Costa Rica as part of a STEM trip and there I was able to interact with the wildlife in Costa Rica and that was definitely something way different than just sitting in a lab doing research and being a workaholic. Absolutely. And now talk about, I mean, working in your kitchen, working in your garage, what was that experience like? Yeah, so when I was in middle school, I didn't really have any access to any fancy laboratory facilities, which now I'm grateful that I have a mentor at the University of Massachusetts Lowell who has given me access to those facilities. But when I was in middle school and I started having this idea, I kind of needed somewhere to test it. So I decided to convert my basement and garage into a little makeshift laboratory. And I would order all the uh, materials that I needed off of chemical companies online, and I would start working on my project there. And yes, I did at one point work in my kitchen, but my parents weren't very, uh, they didn't really approve of that. <laughs> so I, I stuck to my basement and garage. That's awesome. <laughs> no, did you, did you have friends that participated in this with you or were you kind of doing your own thing or like, how did that work? 
Yeah, so um, in Nashua, I didn't have any friends that were also interested in this, at the time at least, that were interested in this whole science fair uh, path and this scientific research. But I was very fortunate over the past three years to make some really great uh, and close friends through, through going to these national and international science fairs. And actually the friends that I've met through science fairs are definitely some of the closest friends that I have today. And I'm very happy to be uh, united with some of them from across the country here at Harvard. Well, it's so cool because I think with um, advancements in technology, having met these people, you can stay in touch. And now, like you say, it's like a global community at Harvard. Yeah. So it's really fantastic that you've been able to like meet your peeps. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's and really connect the science with fair community is definitely something I'm grateful to be a part of. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool. What do you do for fun? Like, what does a scientist <laughs> do for fun? <laughs> um, I guess my friends and I, obviously, eating around Harvard Square is something that's, that's a lot of fun for us. So we go out, uh, just wander around Boston, Cambridge is, is a lot of fun. Do you have a favorite restaurant? Not yet, but I will find one. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your your most exciting part of being at, I mean, it's only been, a, what, a month that you've been at Harvard, but what's it's, been, like, yeah. the overwhelming, you know, exciting? What's been the most so far? Just meeting all the amazing people and listening to each one of their stories and, like, how they've grown over the past uh, 18 years. And it's just really great to, to meet all these cool people coming from so many different backgrounds and, and learn about their stories and then become friends with them and just have lunch with these so many uh, people that, that are so interesting. For example, like my friend group in, includes people who have done International Chemistry Olympiad to an Olympic skier. So it's, it's just really great to be able to interact with these amazing people on a daily basis. Who are some of, like, have you in the last three years met someone that you've considered a role model or an idol, another scientist type thing? Uh, yeah, I think that there are definitely some, perhaps not someone that I met, but there are a lot of women in STEM role models that I've had, like Rosalind Franklin, who uh, was involved in research with finding the molecular structure of DNA has always been an inspiration for me. And what about, like, so, is there someone, a contemporary of yours, that you look to when you want to share ideas or, or, or get insider information? Is there a contemporary that you really admire? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm grateful to have my mentor, as I mentioned before, Professor Nagarajan at the University of Massachusetts Lowell, who has been instrumental in guiding me throughout this research process and who I can share any new ideas with. Has Ellen DeGeneres called you yet because you've gone viral? <laughs> <laughs> she has not. She has not. No, that would, be, that would be, I'm sure, an interesting experience. But uh, no, it hasn't happened yet. Not yet. yet. Yeah. Not yet. I mean, you've gone viral. It's big. <laughs> um, so one thing that was, speaking about going viral, that in, it was the first time I came across you, um, is a Facebook page called A Mighty Girl. And mm -hmm. it's really about these people you may not have heard from that are amazing women that are changing our world. And you're one of them. And it's such an honor, as we've said, to be here with you. Um, so who, I mean, what did that feel like? Or what does it feel like that everybody just looks at you like you're amazing? I mean, it definitely, obviously, I'm, I'm grateful for that people see me as such a role model, but it, I think there, it, it also comes with a little bit of pressure in that there are so many people who are kind of following what I'm going to be doing in the future. But overall, I'm just so grateful for all the support. I know through reading those Mighty Girl comments just made me feel extremely grateful for everyone who's helped me along the way and for everyone who is uh, showing their support and willing to help me in the future. So are you like a local celebrity at Harvard now? Um, I wouldn't say. I, I'd say that there are a lot of people here at Harvard who are local celebrities. So I, I wouldn't call myself one of them. We will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any pets? <laughs> I do not have any pets, no. I do, however, have a very supportive little sister. Aww. How old's your sister? Uh, her birthday was yesterday, September 30th. She just turned 14. Oh, awesome. Happy birthday to her. Yeah. Does she want to follow in her big sister's steps? Does she like science as much as you do? 
Um, I think she's interested in science, but she's only 14 now, and she also has a passion for Greek mythology and a passion for several other things. So we'll see where uh, she goes with that. Awesome. That's so fun. That is really cool. And, like, do you have any other hobbies, like, outside of the science world? What kinds of things, other types of things do you like to do? Yeah, I actually really love martial arts. I've been doing it ever since I was five years old, so that's like over a decade, and that's something I'm really passionate about. I have a black belt in Shaolin Kempo and in Taekwondo, and at Harvard, I hope to continue this passion by joining the Wushu Club. Oh, that's awesome. When do you get to join, or when do you find out if you're joining? Um, I'll probably join sometime this month. Last month was kind of, September was kind of busy for me because I was traveling a lot, but I'd like to join sometime this month in October. So not only are you super smart, we don't want to meet you in a back alley. <laughs> We've got to be careful. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's good. Good for you. Now, do you have, so you have a roommate, one roommate at Harvard or? Um, so at Harvard, the dorming situation works in that we all have kind of these suites. So yep. we have a suite with five people and four rooms. So I share a room with one other person, and then the other three people have their own rooms, and then we'll switch as the uh, semester changes. So was it kind of interesting journeying into that adventure, you know, being here and then moving there? And Yeah, it was definitely a new experience and a new environment. Obviously, you know, we're all off on our own now. In, in college and just being surrounded by my peers and friends constantly is a new environment, but um, it's something that I think we're all slowly adjusting to and we're, we're all enjoying every moment of it. So what are your goals for this semester and this year? Um, I guess for this semester, just keep my grades up, uh, <laughs> meet, meet, some, meet some cool people and just, just continue on how I've been doing in the past month. That's awesome. Is there any specific person that you know that is at Harvard that you can't wait to meet? Um, not necessarily, but there are definitely some cool professors here who are internationally known for the work that they've done, so I'd be honored to take uh, any one of their classes. That's great. Do you have any of those professors now teaching you, or is that something in the future you're hoping to get in? That's something in the future that I'm hoping to get in, yeah. yeah. What about, like, have you been asked to speak to, like, young women that are middle school or anything like that with your dream, like, how you got started mm -hmm. or to encourage them to continue and not stop and not to give up? Yeah, I've actually been invited to speak at schools um, across the country, and I was even uh, able to speak at a school in India where I spoke to kids about pursuing their uh, STEM-related interest. So I think that's something that I really love. I really love encouraging other students, especially young women, to uh, pursue their STEM interests, and I hope to continue to do that. That would be pretty interesting to go back to India and do that. Pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. I'm very fortunate to be able to go to India every year, so it was nice to be able to speak to a school and bring my experience and share it with them. Do they ask you a lot of questions about life in America? Uh, yeah, they're obviously the, the schooling environments are very different in India and in America in that in India everything is very, everyone is uh, extremely respectful with their teachers or they, they follow like strict schedules. Boys and girls are always separated in classrooms or in buses. So the environment there is very different. And one question which I found kind of funny that they asked me is they were like, how did you get your American accent? <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> I was born and raised in America, but that's something I guess they didn't initially comprehend. Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting because school in a lot of parts of the world is a privilege. It's not just a, you know, a, a normal way of life kind of thing. So it's nice, it's good to hear that they have that respect level there. Yeah, definitely. Now, one other thing you had mentioned in your TED Talk was seeing these children that were your age that were traveling for miles and miles to get water that you, that they perceived as clean, that you said, you know, absolutely wasn't. And that's really what triggered your, your passion. So going back now and knowing that you have this opportunity to, to maybe change that, how do you see it changing that? Yeah, that's what in, I mentioned that in the future I hope to be able to deploy my composite in the real world. And definitely India, where I was initially inspired, 
to uh, begin my project is somewhere where I would like to uh, begin deploying my invention. So I, I hope that in perhaps not in the near future, but I hope that in the future, the global water crisis won't be as prevalent as it is now. And how do you see that? Do you kind of have um, a vision yourself as to what the water problem is like currently and, and, and what would happen if it didn't change? Um, I think that I think that actually a lot of developed countries have enough resources to begin helping these developing countries that don't have access to clean water. But there are definitely, you know, a lot of political uh, controversies involved in doing such. So I think that something that needs to happen is just helping these people needs to become a priority in people's minds, and then we can move forward with that. And. We're kind of running a little short on time, but I want to know, like, what, tell us what a typical, because we, we know you're a typical girl, too, outside of all these <laughs> huge accomplishments that you've made. So what, what, share with us what makes you a typical kid, American um, kid. I guess the fact that a few, like, half an hour ago, I kind of overslept on a nap. <laughs> which makes me a very typical college student, I suppose. The fact that I often sleep at 3 in the morning procrastinating because I haven't done my homework yet, again, makes me, I would say, a, a, a typical student. I love that. I love that you're so candid, too, because it's very refreshing to talk to someone who is so intelligent and has accomplished so much but is so real. So we really appreciate that. Thank you so much for all your kind words. <laughs> Ladies, did you have any other questions before we say goodbye to our friend? If you had, you have one quote that really rings true to your heart and to your purpose, what is mm. it? Ooh, this is, this is a tough one. <laughs> hmm. I guess I actually, I actually have a list of a bunch of quotes that I like, and one of my favorites has always been, because I've often been the youngest in a lot of the things that I do, um, one of my favorite quotes has been by Mark Twain in that age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Oh, I love that. Oh, awesome. Good delivery that. on that one, too. I love that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us today, Topeka. Thank you so much for inviting really, me. Oh, you are just delightful, and we wish you all the best. <laughs> thank we you. We truly do. Thank you so much for joining us, folks at home. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as we did. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or would like to reach us, please feel free to email us at theloftnashua at gmail.com. Until next time, get out there and enjoy your community. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.